Okay, here's the problem we're going to try to maximize, and I'm going to walk you through the equations here to explain how I set this up. Uh, you can look at the question help. Uh, they have a little bit better explanation, possibly. Uh, so anyway, we're going to do, we're going to try to maximize uh, this equation here, which is that um, based on a pre-show survey, it's believed that 34, 39, and 44 in thousands of viewers will watch the program for each minute. The senator, congresswoman, and governor are on the air. So we're going to take 34 times x1, 39 times x2, 44 times x3, and we're going to maximize that. Now the other constraint is that x1 plus x2 plus x3, the total time taken by all three people, has to be, uh, it's an hour-long show, all right? And the show will have at least six minutes of direct request for money from, from viewers. So what that means is we're going to lose six of our 60 minutes to run commercials basically. Therefore we have the total time can has to be less than or equal to 54. Uh, the senator right here uh, demands that he be on screen for at least twice as long as the governor. All right so the senator needs to be at least or greater than two times x3 which is the governor. And then finally the total time taken by the senator and the governor x1 plus x3 must be at least greater than or equal to two times the amount of time taken by the congresswoman. So that's how we get these equations. And now what we're going to do is reorganize them so we have our x1, x2, and x3 on the left-hand side and our numbers on the other side. And we will also include our slack variables. So I'm going to set that up now. So you can see I've rearranged my variables here now. And so I have my first equation x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus my slack variable. Uh, has to be uh, 54 on the other side. That's the number. And then we have uh, negative x1. So I rearranged this one uh, basically to subtract the x1 over to here. So we have less than the whole way through. Uh, negative x1 plus 2x3 plus my second slack variable equals 0. And then likewise down here, uh, similar to what I did on the other one, I take and subtract x1 and x3 over to here. And that makes that all less than or equal to 0. And so we have negative x1 plus 2x2 minus x3 plus s3, the slack variable for that one, equals 0. And then finally, we have our final equation where we get the coefficients negative, negative 34x1 minus 39x2 minus 44x3 plus z equals to 0. And now we can set this up in terms of a tableau. So let me write out the tableau and we'll use these coefficients. And from there, we'll jump to the calculator. And so now you see I've turned that into this tableau. So it's going to be four rows by eight columns. So we have x1, x2, x3, s1, s2, s3, and then z, and then our numbers. So let me show you how the uh, technology works at this point. Hopefully this part is really clear if, to get to here. If it's not, definitely review the question help because uh, they do explain it a little bit better than perhaps I've done in my video. I mostly want to make this video be about how to use the technology from this point because the question help does not give you much guidance there. So let me get the calculator out and we'll show you how that goes. All right, so we have our calculator out now. The first thing we want to do is enter the matrix. So we press the second and then X to the minus one, which shows a matrix there above it. And we're going to go to down and we're going to edit our matrix. So click over to the right. So we set our rows, a number of rows here is four and our number of columns is eight. And now I'm going to enter the matrix. So one, 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 zero, 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 54. And we're going to continue doing that. I'll pause the video while I walk through the boring steps of entering the numbers. Okay, so I've entered the matrix now. I'm going to do a second quit to get out of the matrix. Now, here's where we have to use our math steps again. We go to the most negative indicator, which right here is this uh, negative 44. So we go up into that column and we take this number divided by this number, by this these numbers in this column, and find out which one is the smallest number. So if we do that here, we see that we get, uh, for this row, 54, divided by 1 is 54. Here we do 0 divided by 2 is 0. And then finally, right here we do 0 divided by negative 1. When we divide by a negative number, we discard that one. So of the, the uh, two rows here, the one that is the smallest one is right here. And so we're going to use this number becomes our pivot. So what we want to do first is turn that to a 1 turn that whole row to one, and then we're going to do row operations to make everything in the column beneath that all zeros. Let's turn that to a, to a one. 
So we can do row operations. So if you come over here and you do second and matrix and you go over to math, the options that we're going to use are at the bottom. So I'm going to hit the up arrow to jump to the bottom of the list. All right. So I'm going to take and do row row. So I'm going to use that times row and I want to take and multiply row two by one half. So 0 0.5 is my thing I'm gonna multiply by, comma, choose the matrix that you want. We want to choose matrix A, so we do second matrix A, and then comma, and we're gonna do that to row two. And then the final thing you want to do here is if you just do this row operation, it won't change the matrix. We need it to store that answer as our new matrix A. So click the store button, and then second, matrix and then matrix A. And so we press enter and you see it's changed row two to be negative one half, zero, one. We wanted a one right there. So now I want to turn that one right there into a zero, turn that negative one into a zero, and turn that negative 44 into a zero. To turn this into a zero, I'm gonna multiply this one by negative one and add it to row one. So we do second matrix, go over to our math. And so as you recall, I wanna take and multiply negative one, make sure you use negative, not minus, use the negative button, comma, matrix A. We're gonna multiply row two by that number and then add it to row one. So notice we're using the, the row plus, times row plus. And again, we're gonna store that as matrix A. And we press enter and notice what happened. It did all the math for us. That number above the one is now a zero. That's what we wanted. Now the next one is to turn this into a zero. Easy peasy, because all I have to do is just add these two rows together. Now here's the trick. Hit second and then enter, and it brings up that exact command again, and now all you have to do is edit the number. So we wanted to multiply by one, or just keep it the same. And now we're gonna multiply row two by one, and then add it to row three, and store that as matrix A. And boom, now row three has a zero in it. And now the final step is to multiply row two by 44, and add it to row four. So second, enter, we'll bring up your last command, and we're gonna multiply by 44. So you're gonna to have to do an insert here. So if I do one four, uh, I need to do insert four. So that's 44, I'm gonna multiply row two by that and add it to row four, and that becomes my new matrix A. All right, so now we have this new matrix A, and I'm gonna come over here back to the uh, whiteboard over here, and I'm gonna write down the new matrix. All right, so this is the matrix that we created by doing those steps that I just showed. All right, so now that we have to do that same process over again, go find the most negative indicator. All right, so the most negative number on the bottom row, and that's this negative 56. And we're gonna do the same process. We're gonna say, what's 54 divided by uh, 1.5? All right, again, we're taking this number here and dividing it by that number. Zero divided by negative, so with that one we don't include, remember, like we set up here, when we divide by negative, that one doesn't count. We take zero divided by a negative, that one doesn't count. All right, so what we have here is we're gonna take this row and this becomes the pivot now. All right, so we wanna change that to a one. So we're gonna take and do row one divided by 1.5. All right, that'll be our first step. So let me get the calculator back out. All right, so we have the calculator out. Now, we're, again, we're gonna take and do row one divided by 1.5. So we go down and we do our math again. Now this time again, we're just doing a row multiplication, not a row multiplication and add. So we go back to option E and we're going to take and we're going to do, I'm going to say divided by 1.5 because it's trying to do a multiplication. I have to do a division. So I'm going to write it that way, comma, matrix A, and we're going to do that to row one. All right, so we come back over here and do row one. And again, we have to store that to save the change in the matrix, store that as matrix A. And now you can see we have a one in the first position. So now we need to get rid of all of these below that. So I'm gonna multiply row one times a half and add it to row two. I'm gonna take row one and multiply it by 0 0.5, matrix A, and I'm gonna take and do that times row one and add it to row two, and that's gonna make that column there turn into a zero. And so just like that, that number there became a zero. Same thing now, let's do it again. We're gonna multiply by 1.5 and add it to negative 1.5 to make that zero. So again, second enter to bring up your last calculation. Change that to 1.5. We're gonna do row one and add it to row three. Now we have zero there. And the final step is to multiply row number one by 56 and add it to row four. So second enter, row one, multiply it by 56, and then delete that five out. We're gonna add that to row four and store it as A. 
So now we have one and zero, zero, zero. So we're where we want to be there. Now the final step here is we're going to have to do all of this one more time because we still have a negative indicator. If I scroll over, I still have zero here and I have zero in the first column, but now I need to work on this column. So I'm going to do that same step. So let me come write the matrix back out one more time. Okay, so here's my matrix now. You can see we've done a lot of simplification here uh, to this matrix. And we got to do that same step again. So go to this column. This is still a negative indicator here. This negative 1.67. And we're going to take and divide each of these numbers and see which one is the smallest. All right, so we're going to take 36 divided by 0 0.67. All right, one thing you might want to realize here is uh, 0 0.67 is a fraction. It's 2 thirds. So if you divide by 2 thirds, that's like multiplying by 3 halves. Um, you have a calculator, so you can do it however you want. And then 18 divided by 1 third or 0 0.33, doesn't matter how you, are, you want to do it. And then 54 divided by 3, and we're going to find out what those are. So I'm going to do this calculation. You see I get 54, 54, and 18. So 18 is the smallest number. Therefore, this number 3 right here is going to become our pivot. So we're going to do this step, and this will be the final rotation. Okay, so we're going to take our matrix, and again, we're going to do second matrix, and go over to math. And we're going to change that to a 1 first. So we're going to take and we're going to multiply by 1 third is one way to turn that 3 to a 1. And again, comma and matrix A, comma. And then we're going to do that to row 3. And don't forget to always store that as matrix A. So now you can see that entry is a 1. So now we're going to take and change all of those to zeros as well. Now, one thing that might help here, uh, if you can't see that these are fractions, you can do a conversion to fraction here by doing math and then convert to fractions. And so you can convert that matrix to a set of fractions. I'm not going to do that here just because uh, those decimals don't scare me, but uh, they may scare some of you. So, uh, of course, fractions are pretty scary too. So anyway, now I'm going to go back to matrix and I'm going to do math. And now we're going to do that final operation, the times row plus. So I want to multiply row 1 times 0.66667 negative, right? A negative 0.667. So that's negative 2 thirds. So negative 2 thirds. All right, I'm going to do it to matrix A. And we're going to take that and that be row 3 and change row 2. Or sorry, row 1. And again, store that as matrix A. So now we've turned that first number there to a 0. Now we're going to do it again and turn that to a 0. So we need to do times negative 1 third. So again, second, enter, and it'll bring up that last function we used. We're going to do row 3, and that's going to be the new row 2. So that turned that to a 0. And finally, this number down here is 1 and 2 thirds. So that's 5 thirds. So I'm going to do it one more time. In this case, the signs are already opposite, so I don't need a negative this time. So I can just do 5 thirds and delete that out. So 5 thirds, and then row 3, and that becomes the new row 4. And so now you can see we finally have the matrix that we want. And just to decrease the size of my matrix, I did that conversion to a fraction here. Uh, just because those decimals are so long. So now we look for our entry columns where we have all ones and zeros, and those are our variables we're going to look at. So right here we have 1, x1 is, and we scroll to the end of the matrix. Ignore all those columns because they are not zeros and ones. And we go down and 24. So the senator is x1. His amount of time is 24. And then we go back to our matrix. And if you recall, x2, now to be careful here, that I thought that was x2 myself. That's actually not x2. Let's go back and look. When you go back over here, you realize that's x3. 1 times x3 is right there. You could do a row swap if you wanted to, but just be careful at that point. So that means x3 is 12. And of course, by the same logic then, x2 has to be 18. So we can go back to our problem and put those answers in. I'll do that now. So the senator should be allotted 24 minutes. Congresswoman should be, and I remember she's x2. So she is 18. And then finally, the governor should be allotted uh, x3. He's 12 minutes. All right. And then the maximum number of viewers, this is where you'll go back to your original equation, to the thing we were trying to maximize, and you'll plug in those numbers. And so you can see I've done that here. 24 for x1, 18 for x2, 12 for x3. And we multiply that together on the calculator, and I get 2,046. Now be careful here just how the question was worded. It wants to know how many millions of viewers, and this is in the thousands. Let's go back and look at our question. So we had 2,046 was our answer, but again, if you'll notice back up here, these viewers were in thousands. So we need to make this 2,046,000. And that wraps up this problem.